Welcome to the Discovery After Show. Uh, the Free Rick movement is well-meaning, but does it ever make things <clears throat> awkward for you, Rick? Does it make it awkward? It doesn't make it awkward. I wish I'd get a t-shirt. That's not a good answer. No, I might be selling t-shirts. I wanted one. All right, oh, next. Uh, <laughs> I knew you were going to say that, Rick. I shouldn't ask you. There's no more questions for you. This was originally an off-air build. Why are some of your builds on air and some are off air? What is that, the horse bike? We have customers that come to us that want bikes built and they- I think the okay. thing, yeah, the thing of it is we build we tons of bikes for people mm -hmm. from all over the world. This, this particular person uh, wanted to keep his anonymity. So he was okay with uh, showing the bike on air, which I thought was a great build. Mm -hmm. I mean, horse head or not horse head, yeah. I thought the, uh, the bike, the, you know, <clears throat> the machine in that, uh, that head oh, no, out of thing. aluminum. And the bottom line is that whatever, regardless of what anybody thinks, the customer got what he wanted and, exactly and he right. was more than, happy. than mm -hmm. happy with it. So I'll do it every time. How did that, how did that become an on-air bike opposed to not? You know, me personally, I thought it was a pretty cool bike. Uh -huh. Not everybody was in agreement with that, but I thought it was a real cool bike. Oh, it was so I actually reached out to the guy and he said, you know what, uh, I'm okay with you putting it on air, but I just don't want you to tell people who you're building it for. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. So we put it on air. It was just. I mean, listen, every, every single show we do is like for a corporation, it's for this, for a reason, for that reason. So that was for no in particular reason other, you know, than, other than I thought it was a cool build. Paul uh -huh. wanted all the viewers to see how cool, you know, the gas tank and the whole concept of the bike was. And the fact that it was a horse head is something really unique. So everyone, he wanted, he actually <coughs> wanted everyone to see the bike. He wanted the bike exposed mm -hmm. as opposed to, you know, a lot, we do a lot of great bikes. Don't ever speak that, for me, all right? That, that aren't. What are you talking about? I'm not speaking said, for you. you are. No, we, we do team, a lot. Paul wanted, bro. Okay, how long did it take to stretch that Pro Street frame? On TV, it was like two minutes. That's all it took. A minute and a half. Uh, yeah, the, well, the neck angle was wrong <laughs> for the situation where it was going to be. Yeah, they wanted uh, more. The trail, you, the raking trail wasn't going to come out correct, and mm -hmm. we wanted a little bit more riding to it. Like as far as the time it took us, I, I don't think it took us three, four hours. Yeah, yeah well, complete. it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't a really lot. that big of a job. Right. It took more time to cut it apart. And Actually, it did take a long time to do. It did take a pretty long time to do. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't hours. like, it was, I think it was more than a couple of hours. By the time you blended it and well, cut it and put it oh, in the chair, well, completely I mean, finished, yeah. 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 It, it, listen, to do that job correctly, to make sure it's dead on, you just don't <clears> cut it and you just don't, no. you know, right. we had to uh, put it in the, in the jig, make the frame sure jig. everything lined up. We cut the down tubes sure. out. In, in reality, I guess if that's all you had to do uh, with a couple people, I would say, Four hours sound about right. Yeah, yeah. it's probably right. Yeah. Around. You know, everybody it helped out as usual. You know, Jim got the neck; he cleaned the neck up for us. And then uh, oh. Rick arced to lower the, the down tubes. The down tubes, yep. And we changed that up a little bit, and it, yeah, but it's strong and it came out nice. So it's about an eight-hour job. On TV, it was fifteen-minute job. All right, this one's a doozy. It's a long one, so. You want me to read it? Yes. You're a smart guy. <clears throat> And senior, the comment that OCC builds cheap bikes for cheap clients really got you steamed. What did you mean when you said, it's not what you build in one shot, it's what you build in a year? That, that, you want me to answer that question? Yeah. The question is this. Be, at the end of the year, okay, if you, if you build um, 100 bikes and you make $100,000, or you build two bikes and you make ninety thousand dollars. What would you rather build? A mm -hmm. hundred bikes. Sure. No, because you're making ten thousand dollars more. Now that's the way that I always did business. In other words, if I never went for the the big hit, but I did repetition. And at the end of the year, you look at what you made. Mm -hmm. If you're making more that way than just doing one or two jobs, then as a as, as a as a business person, you're going to go where you make the most money at the end of the year. So it's not all about making the, the quick kill. It's about, for us, the way that we're geared, we can, do, we can do bikes in three days that are outrageous bikes, where it takes Junior and those guys four weeks, because that's why we build one bike per show, and it takes them two shows to build one bike. Mm -hmm. So they might need to get the extra money where we could knock out bikes all day long. And that's the way we're designed here because our facility's set up that way. We have every piece of equipment in the world and gives us the capability to do a lot more than Jesse or Paulie. Mm -hmm. 
So there. <laughs> okay. That's it for now. Thanks for watching the Chopper After Show. See you next time. <laughs>